Hello, fellow risk takers, and welcome to my worst investment ever. Stories of loss to keep you winning. In our community, we know that to win in investing, you must take risk, but to win big, you've got to reduce it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm on a mission to help 1 million people reduce risk in their lives. And that mission has led me to create the Become a Better Investor community. In the community, you get access to our global asset allocation strategies, stock portfolios, our investment research, weekly live sessions, and risk reduction lessons I've learned from more than 500 guests. Go to My Worst Investment Ever right now to claim your exclusive podcast listener lifetime discount. Fellow risk takers, this is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stotts from A.E. Stotts Academy, and I'm here with featured guest, guest see, I am the worst podcast, Keith Johns. <laughs> Keith, are you ready to join the mission? I am very ready, Andrew. Thanks for having me on. I am excited to have you on and learn more. And let me introduce you to the audience. Keith okay. Johns helps corporate leaders who are feeling stuck in their nine to five break free from corporate by building and scaling a purpose-driven business. Keith believes you're not crazy for wanting more and it is possible to have more purpose, freedom, income, and free time in your work and your life. Keith, take a minute and tell us about the unique value that you bring to this wonderful world. I love hearing that out loud. Yeah, you know, when COVID hit, it changed things a lot. It it was a tipping point for me when I got to work from home and had some spare time and this whole solopreneur word started popping up. And my parents were blue collar, you know, I, uh, there was no way I could start my own business. It, it was, as, it, you might as well have said, become an astronaut for how distant it felt. And um, I realized that it was the path I needed to take. And I talked to a few people who, like me, hadn't been born entrepreneurs. And but I, I decided I didn't want to just start a business. I didn't want to create an ATM, which I think a lot of people want to. I wanted to bring my light to the world and I wanted other people to bring their light to the world you know moms are cheesy and my mom my whole life has has told me people see a light in you and you know you roll your eyes whatever and now you're an adult and she tells you those stories like no no no, son your entire childhood from the time you were a toddler through middle, middle school high school parents pull me aside and say what is it with Keith and so I want to bring that light out in other people and have them start a business based on that. This isn't just about creating a dropship e-commerce company so that you can get out of corporate and, and sit on an island. This is about what do you put on this earth to do to serve at the highest order other humans around you? What's your purpose? Mm. That's how I like to help people start their business. Because I tell you what, when I've got clarity on the life I want to live, and clarity on the purpose I want to serve, I fly out of bed every morning to live my life and to serve the people who want to live life like I do. And that's an incredible way to go about your day. It's wonderful. And I mean, I was thinking when I was, you know, reading your bio about how when I was 17, you know, I stumbled into a 12-step program and it said, if we are painstaking at this phase of our development, we'll be amazed before we're halfway through. We're going to know a new freedom and a new happiness. We're not yeah. going to regret the past nor wish to shut the door on it. And all of a sudden, I learned these 12 promises in that 12-step program. And I said to myself, I want all of those. I'm not yeah. here for one. Yeah. And I think that, you know, when I listen to you, I think for the listeners and the viewers out there, you know, if you want more out of life, talk to Keith and think about how you can build that purpose-driven life. So that's what I would say. It's so cool that we have that in common. So mm -hmm. I'm 11 years clean and sober as well. And when I joined, I was in AIA as well, and I didn't have a program for life. Mm -hmm. I was um, very insecure. I had a, a you know tough childhood. There's a range of tough childhoods. I was emotionally abused. It was very difficult growing up. I was never good enough, no matter what I did. And uh, it turned out that alcohol took those uncomfortable feelings away. 
and I was very arrogant. I was grandiose. I had a lot of character defects <laughs> that I used to overcome feeling, uh, feeling less than. And um, I took that path right up to death's door, um, was in the hospital. My heart was failing. The doctors told my mom I wouldn't make it. She bought me a, a grave. There is a, there's a grave out there with my name mm -hmm. on it. And um, one night in the ICU, my, my heart started pumping again and I survived. Two weeks later, I walked out of the hospital. Uh, no job, no home, nothing to do. Um, I had to start over and it was humbling. And when I walked into those rooms, it's the first time in my life I shut my mouth, opened my ears and did what I was told. I humbled myself to someone who had achieved something I wanted to achieve. And that pattern has served me so highly. I repeat it again and again and again. When I see someone who's living or having experiences that I want, I close my mouth, I open my ears and I do what I'm told. And so from AA sponsors to therapists to all the way up to my business coaches to my first business coach ever, Lauren Widrick, who said, here's the life I was living, high stress, high strain, um, in the tech industry, grinding it out to make other people very rich. And now I live this different lifestyle. And I reached out to her, not unlike the day I, I tapped my sponsor on the shoulder, nervous as hell saying, will you sponsor me? Right. I reached out to Lauren and said, I don't know what it is you do but I'm willing to, to grab onto your belt loops. Teach me how to become an entrepreneur because I feel like that's the next massive growth stage in my life where I set the rules, where I make my own schedule, where I determine how much money I can make and I do what I want, when I want, with whom I want. And I bring my light to the world so other people can realize how far you can fall and how high you can get. A very healthy high, of course, not the... Mm. Uh, the best Not high. The fashion high. The best high of living life at peace and at ease and abundantly. That's so when you bring up the program, that program was formative. Yeah. And then I repeated that step so many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the key is reaching out, getting help. And that's a key thing. And um, well, now it's time to share your worst investment ever. And since no one goes into their worst investment thinking it will be. Tell us a bit about the circumstances leading up to it and then tell us your story. So I made a, I, you know, I'm not as advanced. It's interesting. Um, you know, my dad was a truck driver. My mom was a cleaning lady. We lived check to check. Um, my mom told me I was crazy for leaving my DOO job behind. I mean, I had risen, I'd climbed up the ladder. How can you not be happy? You're making more money than the rest of us had. Um, so my, my initial set of investments in life were in my business and putting out money for coaching. Right. And <laughs> it got to the point where I was ready to, um, to diversify where I was marketing my services and I got excited and, um, I, sp <laughs> I invested in two Facebook marketing programs in the same week. <laughs> and so it was, it was five figures. Both of them were, and I got really excited and the salespeople were really good. And I like to follow my intuition and I like connecting with people. And I said, yes. And I was like, awesome. Now I'm going to have someone help me break into Facebook and then I talked to another group that was just as slick and just as amazing. And I was like, and I want to work with you too. I got all caught up in the excitement, right? I don't want to miss out. And, you know, they used really good sales techniques. And, and two days later, I was like, oh, God, oh, God, that was a really emotionally charged decision you made there. And now you don't have the time to integrate to Facebook systems at the same time. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So I did a mea culpa. And I'm, I'm, I'm leveraging one of those investments right now. And I'm, uh, I'm going to, I put the other one on the back shelf. I still have access to it. They've, they've given me some grace there, but even just the idea of, of spending money that way. And I now have some stocks and I'm looking into real estate. It blows my parents' mind that that's, that's even possible. 
Mm. Uh, second crazy thing that happened was I did get, um, I did fall for a scam in the uh, magical world of um, crypto. So I was excited about a, a DeFi launch and I've got some money in DeFi that I'm really excited about that space too. Mm. Uh, I got excited about a DeFi launch once and lost 400 bucks. I'll actually put a number on that one. Lost 400 bucks. Because you know, a scammer said, "Oh, this is open. Go buy the tokens." And I was like, "Great, I can go buy the tokens." And then four hundred dollars later, I'd learned a very hard lesson. So I'm very much a baby investor um, mm. and trying to learn how to have the right mindset and keep my head about me because no one taught me these things. Right. Yep. So how would you describe the lessons that you learn from that experience? Ah, slow down. Pay attention to your emotional state, um, have a plan, probably talk to some other people uh, who have more experience and can help me navigate the waters a little more successful. Mm. Um, don't get caught up. Like there, there will be plenty of entry opportunities at different moments. Um, don't let the fear of missing out push you to do something before you're ready. There, it's it's like a door, just because one door closes, it doesn't mean there aren't a million other doors and a million yeah. other points. There's tons of opportunities out there. Maybe yeah. I'll just, one of the things that I would say about it is that um, I've interviewed uh, almost 600 people. I've had about 500 people submit their written stories to me. And from it, I can tell you that there's six common mistakes that people make. The first one is that they fail to do their research. The second one is that they fail to properly assess and manage risk. But the third one is that they've been driven by emotion or flaw. Yeah. And yeah. I think that this is just a case of emotion, you know, getting you excited about, I mean, ultimately you're excited about an outcome that you want and right. sales, salespeople are really good at tapping into that. And I think yes. one of the, one of the things that I would say from my own experience that I've really begun to enjoy is that I give things like that to my business partners. Okay. I think this looks interesting. Why don't you guys look at it? So it's funny. It actually drove me to hire my first employee. And when I say that out loud, my palms sweat because holy crap, I've got someone working for me it is nuts. You know, I thought I would want to keep the business really simple and and not add that stress. Didn't you leave corporate so that you didn't have to have that? But my intuition went off, but in a very calm, like centered meditative place and there was a human being in my life and I said that person's my first employee and now I've got somebody I'm not just in this room in my swirl of visionary creative go 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 do crazy things I can now pick up the phone and say hey Paul <laughs> am I crazy here's what I'm thinking just somebody knowing I've I've been able to build my business to the point where I can have some help and have someone to check me a little bit is such a relief. Because yeah. um, he rolled his eyes. And I was like, well, we got we have two Facebook programs. He said, we got what? I, said, I bought two. He's like, how come? I said, I got excited. <laughs> yes. And as I recall, when I was young and I relapsed one time, the Mike called my sponsor and he said, you're supposed to call me before right. you start right. drinking. That's so it. based, let's go yeah. back a little bit and based on what you learned from this experience and what you continue to learn, what one action would you recommend our listeners take to avoid suffering the same fate? Yeah, I would say the minute you are inspired or you have an idea or you're excited about something, share that excitement. So somebody else knows what you're up to. Mm -hmm. uh, share it as soon as possible. That first little inkling of, hey, I've got this thing going on. Okay, cool. Let's slow down. Let's look at the landscape. Let's figure out what information we need to collect before we actually take action. Bring a buddy along with you on these things. Bring a buddy. So what is a resource of yours or any other resource that you'd recommend for our listeners? Oh, gosh. Um, in relation to what? Well, I, I guess something that, um, that helps you, maybe something that could bring value to them. Uh, it, it could be if you got something of your own, but also it could be a book, yeah. uh, a, a habit or anything like that. Cool. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll share two things. So there's a book 
that changed how I operate in the corporate space. And it helped set um, my approach as a coach. And it's called Questions Are the Answer by Hal Gregerson. It's probably the one book I've actually recommended every single time I've recommended a book. It's the first one I recommend. Mm. The power of shifting from a lean forward. I have to have the answers, advice, advice to a sit back and listen and ask open-ended questions has changed every aspect of my life. It's made me more at ease and more comfortable knowing I don't have to have all the answers, but I could be the most effective person in the room if I listen better and ask better questions. That is, is a, quite a resource. Thank you. It is yeah. a secret sauce and it is a bear of a skill. Like when I'm coaching my clients and I'm trying to author the question in my head and it'll start to come out and I'll say, wait, 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 wait. And I will actually reel the question back in and restate it because you're like cracking a safe. And if you do it just right, the person, they'll get into what's called reflective mode. They'll pull back from you physically. Their eyes will go up to the ceiling and they'll say, that's a good question. If you can get that response, you've got them because they've gotten out of the default response spot where they're just answering off the top of their head and they're actually thinking. You can get someone to think, a super powerful conversation is going to happen right there. Fantastic. So that's what Two, starting your morning right. I was just talking to a client the other day. He's uh, three months in with me starting his business. I said, what's been the biggest thing that you've done? He's like, I set my day. I get up. I drink water. I pound one of these right away. Yeah. I have some quiet time. I meditate. I journal. And if I do that consistently every day, I've got a solid foundation that no matter what happens during the day, I can come back to that peaceful, quiet, centered space. Most people wake up and they let the world grab them by the ear and drag them through the day. Phone, email, kids. And they wonder why they're stressed out messes. They think mm -hmm. they can have control. You can have control. You can have tremendous control, especially if you go deep into therapy and deep into understanding how your brain and your mind work and control your thought patterns. And I could go on and on and on about controlling your thoughts, but it starts with that meditative morning. If you can do right. that, you will have better days. Fantastic. Well, I think that's some great, great recommendations. And I'll have the link to, I just got the link uh, from Amazon of the book. I'll have that in the show notes. So for the listeners cool. out there, check it out. All right, last question. What's okay. your number one goal for the next 12 months? Uh, the next 12 months, I am, what's been amazing about this journey all the way back, you know, to AA, starting at AA 11 years ago, has been me getting comfortable in my own skin and learning who I truly am and what I really enjoy and not behaving the way I think I'm supposed to. Um, this unfolding of me discovering myself and getting comfortable in my own skin. And I realize I'm a visionary and I'm a builder. And that's, crazy. I was a COO. I was the right hand man to the vision. I'm not a visionary, right? I'm not the visionary and builder. And now I've redefined my business three times in two years. And I realize, evidently I get a little bored after a while. <laughs> so my vision for my business has shifted so much to the point where I want to take the business as it is today get it running really well and let other people run it. And I can't believe I'm saying that out loud. Mm -hmm. And I want to go build and do other things. And it blows my mind because that was never a concept introduced to me. It wasn't what my family did, but it feels natural that I'm going to have this business and it's going to be run by other people who work for me. My palms sweat just saying that out loud. And I'm going to go write a book. I'm going to go develop a keynote. I'm going to go develop a whole new um, piece of coaching, you know, that, that mm. we do to other maybe businesses, go build something else, go do the fun stuff and give the things that I'm bored with or not interested in to other people mm. who are excited. It's why I hired Paul, because he said, I want to be your right hand man. I want to be your ops guy. And I said, great. I get to go be the crazy visionary, not too crazy. Don't buy two Facebook programs in one week. Okay. Let's rein it in but I get to go be the idea and the impact guy. And so over the next 12 months, I would love to, to talk to you a year from now and say, guess what? 
that vision is happening. My business is running itself and that's putting money in my pocket, but I'm building these other things. And oh, by the way, I'm taking those profits and I'm investing them wisely. And I'm teaching my kids how to do this. Last story, last night I was at my daughter's freshman open house and the principal stood in front of them and gave them all their options. You can join the military. You can um, go to college two or four year, or you could do a trade. And I was sitting in the audience and I said, he didn't mention entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And that's a shame. It really is. My kids are going to know about this way of life. Fantastic. Well, listeners, there you have it. Another story of loss to keep you winning. If you haven't yet joined the Become a Better Investor community, just go to myworstinvestmentever.com right now and sign up. As we conclude, Keith, I want to thank you again for joining our mission. And on behalf of A. Stotts Academy, I hereby award you alumni status for turning your worst investment ever into your best teaching moment. Do you have any parting words for the audience? No, I really appreciate the time. If anyone's interested in contacting me, I'm on LinkedIn. Reach out and say hi. I'd love to have a conversation. Fantastic. And I'll have links to his LinkedIn in the show notes. And that's a wrap on another great story to help us create, grow, and protect our well fellow risk takers. Let's celebrate that today we added one more person, Keith, to our mission to help 1 million people reduce risk in their lives. This is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stott, saying, I'll see you on the upside.